Good morning, everyone. Today is certainly a good day, and it's wonderful to see all of you here. My name is Heather Quarterman, and I am the news director and co-host for the Hometown Morning Show uh, from the Coast Radio family of stations, 92.1 KKDV, 95.3 KUIC, and 101.7 KKIQ. On behalf of everyone here and Diablo... Oh, that's me. <laughs> anyway, that's... Um, in case you forget, and then we'll have pictures of everybody else and names too. So if you have any questions, feel free to let us know. Um, it's wonderful to be here, of course, with all of you and so many survivors today. H hard to imagine that just a few decades ago, breast cancer was a disease that was taboo and nobody talked about. Um, I think it is probably safe to say that every single person in here has been affected by breast cancer in some way, shape, or form. I am no exception. Um, when I was entering my freshman year of college, my aunt was diagnosed with breast cancer, and it was probably one of the most difficult things for me to watch as she went through tr treatment and lost her hair and picked out a special wig. And every single day that I was able to spend time with her, she took everything in stride and just thanked God and family for helping her through. And she has now been cancer-free since 2001. So it's great to be able to reflect on that. Exactly. And to even just think about the last decade and the advancements that have been made in breast cancer treatment and therapy, and to know that people are able to actually survive and fight this disease and be free of it for so many years. It's just, it's wonderful to hear. Now, thanks to early detection, scientific and treatment advances, and of course, patient empowerment, more women are surviving breast cancer than ever before. We are here to celebrate the two and a half million breast cancer survivors in the United States today who serve as a visible and vocal reminder that life continues after diagnosis and treatment. We are also going to be here to discuss the unique issues that affect breast cancer survivors, the issues you face after you've completed primary treatment, We'll discuss the latest data surrounding treatment and explore key survivorship issues, such as the risk of recurrence and staying on track with treatment. I'm excited to welcome some very special guests this morning. We've got a great panel of leading medical experts from Diablo Valley Oncology. To my right is Dr. Tiffany Svon, who is a medical oncologist and breast specialist. Also here with Diablo Valley Oncology is Michelle Rooney. She's a nurse practitioner who is specially focused on nutrition and exercise. Betsy Shandalov is an occupational therapist who specializes in therapeutic yoga. Together, they are going to discuss some of the medical, phys uh, psychosocial, physical, and nutritional issues that face breast cancer survivors today. We are also going to be joined by Heidi Ardini, a breast cancer survivor who will share her personal story with us. And we also have a special guest from the American Cancer Society of the Greater Bay Area, Juanita Kaiser. This year, we have changed things up a little bit. If you were one of the attendees last year, we're actually going to be collecting questions after each panelist speaks. So if you hear something say that Dr. Savan is talking about and you have some additional questions, go ahead and write that down. And then our ushers will come down in the aisle and collect that from you. I'm pleased to introduce Margaret Stauffer from the Cancer Support Community, San Francisco East Bay, a huge supporter of cancer patients and a co-sponsor of this event. Margaret? Heather, and thank you um, particularly to Sandy Goldberg for organizing this event. Sandy, thank you. I recognize a lot of faces in the audience, and so I know that many of you are familiar with the services of Cancer Support Community, but for those who are not familiar, just want to give you a few highlights of the services that are available at no cost to you and your family members. We have a breast cancer networking group. We have a group for women with metastatic disease. And we have a group for women who are newly diagnosed with breast cancer. In addition to these support groups, both for people with cancer and for support persons, we also have a number of mind, body, and educational programs. One of the speakers you're going to hear today, um, Betsy, is one of our yoga instructors. We have a number of yoga classes and other movement classes, some meditation uh, programs to help people with stress reduction, and then lots of programs that are designed to help you have information so that you can deal as effectively as possible with the disease and move beyond it. 
So we would welcome you to come visit us if you haven't been there and to come back if you have. Um, and there is a program calendar in your bag if you want to look over the services that are available. Thank you. Thank you so much, Margaret. We're privileged to be joined by Juanita Kaiser, uh, not to be confused by the hospital. <laughs> she is from the American Cancer Society Greater Bay Area. She's gonna share some of the resources and services that are available to cancer patients in our community. Juanita? Thank you. I'd like to thank uh, Diablo Valley Oncology and uh, particularly Sandy Goldberg for putting this on and inviting us. Um, the American Cancer Society is uh, quite an old organization. In fact, in 2013, we'll be celebrating 100 years. Um, so uh, we provide many, many services. Everything's free of charge. Uh, things like cancer.org, where you can go to get clinical trial matching and all sorts of sort of non-confusing information. Uh, our 800 number, 227-2345, is available 24-7, 365. When you have that needling question at 2 o'clock in the morning on Thanksgiving, you can call, and there is an expert there to talk to you. And we provide information from them in 153 languages. So it's quite, um, we provide guest, uh, guest lodging for patients that have treatment farther than 50 miles away from home. Uh, patient management health kits so that you get a kit that has your diagnosis in it and you can keep track of all your appointments and everything and you get all of that by calling the 800 number. Um, we have a reach to recovery program which is uh, provides peer support, peer to peer support for uh, patients and it's uh, run by certified uh, survivors who have been survivors for at least a year. We have a wig salon in er virtually every area of the country. Our wig salon in uh, the East Bay happens to be right here in Walnut Creek. Um, we provide look good, feel better sessions, um, callback programs, and one of the largest uh, things that we provide is transportation to treatment. Last year in the Greater Bay Area, Redwood Empire, we provided over 101,000 rides to patients. And how do we do it? Volunteers. Um, lots of people like you who maybe have survived and decided that I'm ready to give back. So anytime you are interested in uh, helping the American Cancer Society provide these services, we would welcome your help. Um, we also provide research. Uh, we have 138 research grants going on right now. Uh, the American Cancer Society is the largest provider of research funding other than the, Amer the government, the US government. Um, so we've got research projects at UCSF, Stanford, uh, UC Berkeley, um, and I know that Diablo Valley Oncology is working with UCSF on a, on a grant right now. We provide advocacy. Um, we work with um, the politicians and the government to try and make sure that uh, <clears throat> cancer is for Front in terms of the policies they're setting up and the health care that they're um, deciding on. And one of the things I want to mention specifically is uh, the California Cancer Research Act, which is coming up on the June ballot. We don't have a proposition number yet, but um, that will provide $600 million in research right here in California and tobacco cessation, and we're doing it by adding a dollar a pack to cigarettes. California has fallen to 32nd in the country in the amount of money we collect on cigarette tax. So we used to be number one. Um, so we urge you all to go out and vote. And so um, I would say we have many events that the American Cancer Society does. Um, making strides against breast cancer is uh, near and dear to all of our hearts. Next weekend, uh, that event is in San Francisco. The following weekend, at, it's at Golden Gate Park. The following weekend is in San Jose at Guadalupe Park. And right here in Heather Farms in Walnut Creek next June, we'll have another Making Strides Against Breast Cancer. These are no registration, no minimum to raise. We welcome everyone. Bring your dogs. It's, we want to raise awareness, and uh, we're very inclusive. So simply stated, the American Cancer Society um, saves lives in four different ways. 
We help people stay well by educating them. We help people get well by providing accurate information, emotional, practical support, finding cures.